All right, so today in the garage is my 2004 GMC Sierra 2500 HD. Like most of these trucks, it's got some broken exhaust manifold bolts. Uh, fortunately for me, I got it really cheap for this reason because the last owner got quoted over $1,000 to pull the motor, extract the broken bolts, and uh, reinstall. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. I shouldn't need to pull the motor for this job. I have done this before on motors on stands. This is the first time I'm trying it out while the uh, motor is in the vehicle. But to be honest, it doesn't look that bad because there's a lot of room under this hood. Um, let me show you what I'm working with. All right, here is the passenger side and uh, with the heater hoses pulled out of the way. You can see there's a pretty good amount of room here. When I first got this, just to stop the annoying leak, I tried out these clamps. You can see it there right on the front of the exhaust manifold. Um, I put one there and then all the way on the back. Let's see if we can get it. There's one on the back bolts and uh, they didn't do a thing. They didn't even slow down the leak. So what that means is either these gaskets are totally trashed or the manifold itself is warped. So um, if I have these things out, I'm not gonna put in a stock manifold to replace this manifold. I'm gonna put headers on. I started looking at long tube header options. Since this is a 2500 HD, it doesn't actually have a Y pipe. It has dual three inch pipes into a giant muffler with two three inch in and then two three inch out and then it merges into a single tail pipe. So that means that if I want to uh, run long tubes, I'm gonna have to replace most of this exhaust system. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be like a thousand bucks. And the ultimate goal for this truck is to turbocharge it. So I'm not gonna spend all that money on parts I'm gonna have to replace anyway. So the alternative was getting a set of shorty headers just to replace the stock manifolds. These are speed engineering headers. Um, they look pretty nice, good quality, nice welds. Um, and they go right in place of the stock manifolds. They have the same flanges as the stock uh, exhaust does. So they'll just bolt right in, um, increase flow a little bit. While I'm doing all this, I'm gonna throw some new plugs and some angled plug wires in, replacing the gaskets with the factory style multi-layer steel gaskets. Looks to be a pretty straightforward job, I hope. We'll see. Um, and then I got this Flow Pro 2505 muffler because apparently the stock muffler is really restrictive and uh, this one is much more open. So I'm gonna slap that in place and hopefully it gets a little bit louder. I'm not looking for anything crazy, but I don't know. Let's see how it sounds. Right, so far all I've done is move the surge tank to give you a little more elbow room here. Pulled off the stock plug wires and you can see that front bolt is broken off. Looks like there's still some sticking out, so that's good. Make it a little easier to grab onto. The center three are intact, and the back two around that last primary are both broken off. Um, and it looks like there might be a little of those bolts sticking out too, so this might not be too bad. Um, I have barely had to take anything apart so far, and there is, there's a lot of room working here. So let me see if those three bolts will come off. I'm guessing they're probably gonna snap too. Uh, I'll see if they'll come off passenger side manifold is out and you can see there was a bunch of scale built up around that port so there was no way that clamp was going to get that thing to seal because there's a big difference in the height right here under this scale and on the clean spot it did the same thing uh, over here on the front port so yeah I guess those clamps would work if uh, your manifold is in better shape than this but they had no chance on this one I didn't bother heating these to actually take them off. I just snapped them right off because I'm not reusing this and I didn't feel like getting out the torch. All right, so here we are with the manifold off. Surprisingly, two of those three bolts that were still intact actually came out. One of them broke. So our final tally here is four broken bolts out of the six holding that manifold on. So what we're gonna do is take a grinder and we're gonna grind all the rust off of these bolts that are sticking out and make them nice and clean and then we're gonna put a nut over them <clears throat> I usually use a 3 8 nut and weld it and then you can put a wrench or a socket 
on that uh, nut that you welded on and spin them right out. The heat from the weld works wonders at loosening them up. And a lot of times they come on the first try, but sometimes you have to weld it a couple times if your weld keeps breaking until you're able to get, uh, get a strong enough weld on it. But it always works, just takes some patience. We have plenty of workspace in here. All we gotta worry about is uh, starting things on fire. One thing I forgot to mention is that sometimes you get lucky and you can put some vice grips on that bolt. There's enough of it sticking out and sometimes it'll spin out without having to weld a nut on it. So before I go ahead and start welding these, I'm gonna try each of them with the vice grips and see what happens, see if we can get lucky here. So I got that front one to start moving a little bit, but then it just uh, kind of rounded off the threads and the vice grip started spinning on it. Not a big deal. It'll come out easily with a nut welded on. So I'm gonna take this little guy, grind those smooth so that the weld can penetrate and get to work. This is what I'm about to use. This is a nice thing about this job. You really don't need anything fancy. This is just a cheap Harbor Freight Flux Core welder. You don't really even have to be good at welding. I'm definitely not a good welder. Really, all you gotta be able to do is uh, basically make a solid tack weld. So I got everything cleaned up and ready to go. You may observe that uh, my dipstick tube unfortunately was so rusty that uh, when I grabbed it, it just kind of broke in half. If you're not from the Midwest, you probably aren't used to seeing engines that look this rusty and scaly, but uh, that's road salt for you, unfortunately. It just kind of comes with the territory, but oh well. As I mentioned before, one of the nice things is the more you weld on it, the more heat you put into it. This one's stubborn.
able to get that stubborn one out. It took a couple tries, but what I ended up doing is taking a flat washer and welding the washer onto the broken stud, uh, just a little bit more surface area to weld to, and then welding a nut onto the flat washer and basically filled the whole center of the nut in with weld. And then it came right up. So you don't always have to do it that way. Usually I don't have to weld the washer on, but it's just one more trick to try if, uh, if the original way is not working. So it can be done, just takes a lot of tries sometimes. All right, got that side cleaned up and spark plugs out. It is ready for a header. Now I'm gonna start working on the bolts. And this side, a little bit more in the way, but really not bad. I'm just gonna move this little battery cable bracket and uh, pull these computer wires out of the way or fuse panel. That should give me all the room I need. Well, that side's in. Got the new plugs and wires in. Plug wires fit really nice. And uh, had her went in with no problems at all. Came with a little EGR block off plate for trucks that don't have EGR like this one. And all I gotta do is get under there and connect the uh, collector. So far, so good. They fit great. All right. Headers, spark plugs, and plug wires are installed. Not really a whole lot to see. Gotta say, the collectors were really a pain to get to line up with uh, the exhaust. Um, I had to use some ratchet straps to pull the pipes various directions, some pry bars, uh, jack to jack up the exhaust a little bit. Um, I can't really blame the header manufacturer because on a brand new vehicle, these would probably fit in great with no issues. But, um, you know, on something that's 16 years old, you got the motor mount sagging, the trans mount sagging, the exhaust hangers sagging. It's, you know, nothing's in the same place it was in when this truck was, uh, was manufactured. But I got everything to work. I started it up, it's leak free. I uh, can't really tell much difference in the way the exhaust sounds, but I didn't really expect to. So next step is to get that ProFlow muffler installed and see what that does for me.